When it comes to drawing from a holster, there's a couple of different situations where we're gonna find ourselves carrying. The first is outside of the waistband, like I'm carrying today, which would be more for like, um, if you're open carrying or if you're at the range and you're doing some practice. But then there's also concealed carry or inside the waistband carry, which brings a whole nother level of um, thought process that goes into drawing your pistol. Absolutely, and I think it's really important that anyone who has decided to carry in a holster that they practice. That's gonna be the most important part. Absolutely. And Christy and I are gonna walk through several of the fundamentals of drawing outside of the waistband or in the waistband. There's a whole nother mindset that comes with drawing from in the waistband. You typically are going to have clothing that is concealing and covering mm -hmm. your firearm. There are barriers that would keep you from quickly accessing your firearm the way you would if it's outside the waistband. And those are really important things that we need to practice and navigate through at home. And dry fire practice, like we're gonna do today, is right. a great way to prepare yourself so that when you get to the range, you can go to live fire and become a lot more efficient with your time spent there. One of the most important things while doing it from home is number one, making sure that there is no ammunition in the room. Absolutely. And that sterilizes your room so that you can practice safely and effectively. It's very important that no matter where you choose to carry, that you practice drawing from that position. The first step is going to make sure, as we mentioned before, that you have a sterile environment and no ammunition in the room. I've cleared my firearm and we're ready to proceed with drawing. So I'm gonna take my non-shooting hand and I'm gonna grab my clothing and I'm going to come out so that I clear the firearm and up to make a safe space. I have my hand on my firearm and I'm gonna make sure that I clear the holster, drop my clothing and my hands are going to meet to get my proper grip. Right now I'm at high compression and from this position, if I was in a self-defense situation, I could shoot. But because we are practicing a full draw, then I'm going to continue out. I'm gonna bring it back into high compression and I'm going to scan and assess to see if there's any other potential attackers or threats. And the next thing that's important is to make sure that my clothing is out of the way and I'm going to look my firearm back into the holster, nice and slow. The entire point to this drill is not being fast, it's being precise. Absolutely. And we're training muscle memory. So we want to do everything very slowly and very accurately, and with repetition will come speed. Absolutely, being controlled in your motions. And that's why at the end I said, look your firearm back into the holster. There's no, no reason to put a firearm back into a holster at a quick pace, because typically when we're at the range and we're practicing this drill, we're gonna be live firing and something could get in the way, something could hit the trigger. So everything we do is controlled and precise. Absolutely. So now let's talk about outside the waistband draw. So we'll transition. Absolutely. Outside the waistband is a lot easier to practice because we don't have that extra barrier of clothing that we have to worry about. With practicing our draw, we want to start building our foundation from the ground up. So we can do either a bladed stance or an isosceles. And I'm going to kind of do a slight blade to my stance because that's just really what I prefer. I'm going to take my strong hand or my shooting hand and I'm going to take this webbing part of my thumb and I'm going to run it up the back strap of the pistol, giving my three fingers a strong index around the grip. My trigger finger is going to be on the frame of the pistol and I'm going to be holding the pistol with a nice firm grip. The goal to practice would be drawing my firearm and my non-shooting hand and shooting hand meeting together at high compression getting a nice, perfect grip around my firearm. And if you were in a defensive situation, at this point, you could engage your threat. For the sake of this practice, we're gonna go ahead and go into a full draw, get on target, find our sight picture, sight alignment, practice perfect trigger press, bring our firearm back in, and reholster. And again, when you go to reholster, you wanna look down and have your firearm slide directly into that holster in a controlled movement. Non-shooting hand comes in, meets my shooting hand, coming out on target, finger on the trigger, in and reholster. 
And the great thing about this drill is you can actually get your finger on the trigger and prep the trigger as soon as your sight picture is perfect. So you don't have to wait until your pistol's at full extension. You can actually get your finger on the trigger as you extend out towards that target. And when you get on the target, press the trigger immediately because this is going to help us get a little faster with time as well. Right, absolutely. Taking that time and making sure that you have that perfect trigger press, pulling straight back, press, press, press is one of the things I always absolutely. say in my head. And it should be a surprise break to us. Mm -hmm. And that way we're not anticipating the recoil or pushing down, which is what a lot of shooters often do. This is something that can be done every day. Absolutely. You can do two or three draws and it's that practice and repetition that is going to continue to help you to improve your draw. Really prepping your family is also important with all dry fire practice. For our example, we have a target mounted on a beam mm -hmm. and we wanna make sure that we have our entire family in a safe place that wouldn't be considered downrange of where we're practicing our dry fire. And it is critical that there is no ammunition anywhere in the room, which makes it a sterile and safe environment. And I think we've said that before, but we just can't say that enough. And we can't stress it enough, the need for training. So get out there, find an NRA pistol instructor or locate a well-armed woman chapter near you.